Hello Creality, this is today's 3D print. This is the CR10 Pro beta unit that you sent me. I am making this video, number one, for you, and number two, in the hopes that I will be able to post this video later for everybody to see when you say it's okay. So we are going to start with the unboxing experience that a user would experience when they open a box. And I will give my feedback, suggestions, things that I notice, or whatnot, anything I think you might find useful as we go. So, stay tuned. A couple things I noticed right away. I love the fact that you took the suggestion to start anodizing some of these parts. They look fantastic. Packing is, as usual, good. I have no complaints about the nice packing so far. We'll see more as I pull it out. I see you are using the equivalent of Capricorn tubes. Is that a um, Capricorn equivalent? Is it actual Capricorn, or did you guys find an analog of it? That'll be interesting. I'll have to check the tolerances inside that tube and see how it looks. Wire management looks nice. Free box. I'm assuming that'll contain tools, etc. Very, very nice. We are back to including a little spool of filament. That is fantastic. It's because this probably costs you guys almost nothing, but it makes a big difference to the end user to have a usable sample of filament to use right away. One suggestion, if it's practical, um, start including colors other than black and white. You know, something a little more interesting for the person to use for their first prints, especially since it's hard to see details in prints when they're printed in white. Not a big deal. That's a small thing. Just something to keep in mind. All right, and this looks like the top layer, so I'm going to pull that out, and we'll be right back. Okay, that's basically a CRX, so we're going to get to that in a minute. All the goodies are here. This is nice. Um, I'm going to pull this off in a minute to, to take a look in here, but I love the red anodized aluminum. Beautiful, very classy. I really like that a lot. Um, I do wish you guys would switch to, um, I don't know if they're Hall Effect Magnetic or if they're optical, but the sensors that TiVo is using on their Michelangelo and Flash, I would like to see you guys switch away from these mechanical switches toward those solid state switches. They do seem to be a lot more reliable and less prone to being broken, so something to consider. Not a huge deal, but something to consider, especially for a pro model. Um, this, let's talk about this. This is gorgeous. Let me get you in closer here. Well, you have this printer, so you know what I'm talking about. But um, this thing is cool. I really, really like this. I would like to see this made available so people can purchase this to add to their printers. Um, one change I would like to see made, if it's possible, if it's practical. I don't know how feasible it is. But um, this end, not so important. This end, however, is very important. The gap between this little triangle section here and the two hobbed drive gears, a little too large. See if it's possible to tighten up that tolerance a little bit to maybe even make this triangle a little more curved to the exact shape of these hob gears and bring them so they're almost touching. The problem is that I believe this gap is still large enough that a flexible filament could work its way out and um, bow and bind and push out the side instead of pushing in where it's supposed to go. Um, so that's something to consider if you can. If that's something you can refine in the final version, try to tighten up the tolerances between the two hob drive gears and this piece here. So this gap right here. See how I can fit my tool in here? It's too big. Flexible filament will be able to work its way out of that. This is fantastic. Just got to tighten it up a little bit. Very, very nice. I don't know how much of a problem this is going to be. Maybe it won't be a problem. But one thing I don't like is the filament sensor being so close to the drive gear. Um, the problem is if the filament breaks, you have to get this filament out. And there's no, you're going to have part of the filament in here and part of it in here, and there's no way to get in here to get it out. I need to be able to push the filament in to reload the hot end and then extract it out. But also, when you're pushing filament into the printer, and you are 
I gotta keep grabbing everything except the small ones. So when you're pushing filament in through here, and it comes out here and goes into your hot end, um, sometimes you need to load filament. You need to push to prime the nozzle. So what you'll do is you'll push on the filament here. And the problem is this gap will allow the filament to bow and bend if there's resistance. And sometimes you just need to give it that little push. Um, a suggestion, if it's feasible, if it's possible, drill the hole here and here out to be a little bit larger so that you can put a piece of PTFE tube between these two, okay? So during assembly, you would put a piece of PTFE tube wider than this gap so that it would insert a little bit into here and a little bit into here. And you would just take a piece of this PTFE tube, which by the way, I pulled this apart. Tolerances look nice. So I don't know if you have actual Capricorn or if you guys have a Chinese manufacturer of this stuff, but it looks pretty good. I'll let you know how it performs. Um, but yeah, that's that's a nice upgrade. Um, so a little piece of PTFE tube in here to fill that gap where it goes into this box and into this box so that when I push on filament here, it doesn't bow here because it's captured by the PTFE tube. And um, a way to... I wish there was a way to make this removable, a way for me to pop this off so that I can get to the broken piece of filament. If the filament breaks in here, how do I get to it? You know, I can't go in here, the gap too small, I can't get the filament. Um, I wish there was a way to have this open so that I can then grab the filament and pull it out or I don't know, a way to make this slide off this way exposing the, then you can leave this sealed but make this on a socket so that it can slide off this way have a little clip on the end here or something I don't, I don't know this is just an idea you don't have to change this for this model but something to think about for the next model or a future revision a way to make this removable so that I can get to the piece of filament and pull it out without having to undo this or something like that to get to the filament just an idea but this this dual gear driven hob drive system is beautiful this is like a your version of a bomb tech basically this is nice i love this you know it's not it doesn't have a reduction drive like the bond gear bomb tech does but phew, that's a nice improvement have driving both of the gears as a gear unit is nice i like that a lot and of course beautiful anodized aluminum nice so far nice and tight bed nice and tight but also smooth good job i like that a lot um, I see you used an ABL. We'll see how well that works. Full-size nozzle. I like that. I love the new finished, the much, much nicer cage unit that you have around this. Your um, unit on the CR-10, Ender-3, etc. was real janky. You know, it just, it wasn't very professional looking. This looks so much nicer. Good job on this. I see you beefed up the cooling fan quite a bit. That'll be interesting to play with. We will see how this cooling unit works. It does look like it's aimed in the right spot, so I am hopeful for that. I assume that'll be blow molded if testing works out right. Um, do wait for testing to make sure that that actually works right. You might consider an optional upgrade to allow a second fan on the other side, but I don't know if that'll be compatible with the ABL sensor in the way. So I don't know if that'll work. Um, otherwise, nothing to say about that really. I'm going to pull this off later and we'll get a look inside there. Otherwise, everything else is pretty standard CR-10 affair. I see no issues. I see no complaints. Did the drivetrain arrive straight? Looks like it. I don't see any obvious wobble. These are still have slack, so these can wiggle around. Excellent. That's good. You do not want to lock those down because otherwise you'll get Z-banding. That's fantastic. I love the new plate. That's very nice. Okay, put that there for now. This is basically CRX. So I'm actually going to stick this over there and I'm going to cover up the red stuff and nobody's ever going to know this is sitting there. Because <laughs> they'll just think it's a CRX. But um, this is great. I love this. You know, of course, if I remember right, this should be adjustable. Uh, looks like it's not adjustable. This one's not adjustable. How do you tension the bed? No tensioning option. A 
Okay, that's interesting. There's no option to tension the bed. I would like to see an option for tightening this belt. So, how do you service this? Why carriage place is nice and thick. You've lightened it where it makes sense to lighten it. Um, for the shipped units, the glass is perfect. No problem with that. One thing, if it's possible, can you make these tabs a little bit bigger? So they stick out a little more because, for example, I could not open this without hurting my fingers. I had to actually stick a screwdriver in here to pop that open because it was too tight and the tab was too small. This one I was able to get, I think. Yeah, see, it, it really hurts your fingers to open that. So if you made those tabs a little longer, you'd be able to get your finger in there to pop them open. Okay. Now, something to consider. Maybe ship these with an extra sticker or offer an extra sticker when people order it because that aluminum plate is perfectly flat. There is not one little bow in this aluminum plate. Please do not reduce the quality of this plate. This is wonderful. I'm going to try to print on this without the glass because that will make this Y carriage a lot lighter, which is good for reducing noise and ghosting. So maybe um, give the option to include an extra sticker, let people buy an extra one of the um, print surfaces, and then they can um, either, they can put a print surface down on here, and then they can always add a piece of glass if they want it, or take the glass off and print directly on the aluminum. That would be a nice option, assuming the Z end stop is adjustable enough to permit the nozzle to reach the aluminum bed. I don't know, but, um, I would like to try that just because it should result in better quality prints. But otherwise, very tight. Uh, absolutely nothing was loose when I opened it. So I'm hoping the same quality control will persist um, when you guys come to production. Because if you can maintain this quality control so far, excellent. Very, very good. Uh, let me pop this thing open and look inside.